Here's a question for you. Will folding phones ever replace regular glass slab phones? Samsung wants you to say yes. Most people would say definitely no, but until you've actually used one, I would argue that the experience is probably not at all what you'd think it would be. Now, I've been using the Galaxy Z Fold 4 pretty much every day since it came out. I, I carry two phones, and, and this has always been one of the two phones in my pocket, whether it was primary or my secondary phone, doesn't matter, I had it with me. And in all honesty, this is my first Galaxy Fold phone that folds in a this orientation, like, like a book. But before I got it, there were some drawbacks that I expected to experience and some positives that I expected as well. And in all honesty, the drawbacks were no problem at all, the ones I expected, and some of the things I thought I would absolutely love I've actually never even used. But instead, I found there were some different benefits and some different drawbacks to foldable phones in general. And after using it for a while, these became incredibly obvious. So I'm gonna go through this as like a pro-con, pro-con, positive, negative style. And I wanna start off with the first positive, not the biggest positive, but, but definitely one that I would miss if I didn't have this phone. And this is when I'm driving. Now, when you're driving, using Google Maps on here is absolutely fantastic. I know a lot of people out there already use Android Auto or CarPlay, but, but not every vehicle has that. And if you have a car that doesn't have that, or if you just like having your phone on the dashboard anyway, having a larger display gives you some extra options. First of all, to have a split screen, if you wanna have maybe a music app that's not supported by CarPlay uh, or Android Auto, it's also great for Google Maps. Like I said, having that more real estate is really nice. But the first drawback, and this is kind of a big one, really is the ergonomics with this. Even though I like the way you can hold it for phone calls, big positive, right? Uh, I like like the larger display, but in all honesty, when you're using the front display here, the, the screen is just too small to really type uh, consistently and, and, and with any kind of comfort. And when you open it, the screen is so large that you can't really use one hand to type here. So you kind of have a weird keyboard situation with either too big of a display or too small of a display with that. I, I did get used to it after using it for a while, but I still make a, a really sizable amount of errors when I'm typing, especially with the small display in the front. Getting back to a positive, everyone talks about multitasking on here. And before I got this phone, I fully expected, you know, it's basically two phones side by side there. I thought I would have two apps open all the time. I'd be using it split screen view. And besides when I'm driving, like I mentioned, having like, you know, SoundCloud or some other app open next to Maps, I almost never have multiple apps open on here. It's great, and a lot of people would like that, but for me personally, I find more of a benefit in a large screen by using one app in a larger layout. So for example, if I'm using like Brave or some other browser, if you use Chrome, it's so nice to be able to read across the entire display uh, instead of having to like go every line, like you don't realize it, but seeing more words on there means less scrolling, which means easier to read things, easier to switch between tabs on the top because you actually do have tabs right there and you can see multiple tabs to really easily use this more similarly to how I use a laptop when I'm searching the web, right? Usually phone layout, you can like read a recipe kind of, but you're scrolling nonstop. This is a huge, huge benefit. Easier to read, easier to toggle tabs, and easier to just get a de better desktop-like experience. And I would actually venture as far as to say that if you're browsing the web and say like planning a vacation, a laptop's obviously the best. The keyboard, the full display, really nice. But without a keyboard on a tablet, I would say that this is actually better than a tablet. And then in last place is a regular glass slab phone, just because of the reasons I already mentioned. And besides browsers, I really like how other apps like email and messages uh, use the full screen and on the left side, they'll have like your conversations like with different people, your contacts, and then the actual like chat, the conversation takes up the right side of the screen. I think that's really, really useful. But speaking of apps, that gets to the first drawback. Some apps get mad and they just won't open. So like I have an earbud tester app that helps me determine like the lag in earbuds and that app doesn't work on here. Like it doesn't allow you to just open it at all. It doesn't try to stretch it, it doesn't go in the middle. The only way it works is if you open it in a split screen layout, otherwise it just crashes and doesn't work. Now, since we're talking about like the future of foldables, will they replace slab phones? This is something that definitely will improve and more apps are going to be compatible with foldables. For the most part, most of them already are, but in the future, we expect something better. And then positive number three is that foldables, the whole concept of folding here, gives you the option to use a phone in a non, like a semi-folded state. And this gives you a lot of cool features, like using the phone as a tripod, so setting it up like this and using the rear lens uh, to film yourself, to film something else, to take a group photo, that's super useful. You can also stand it up in any orientation, so like this uh, or like that, and I think that's really cool to do that. I also use it as a flashlight, so I'll set up a flashlight if like I'm trying to do something, rather than like propping my phone up or shining it 
on, on the ceiling, you know what I mean? It's just nice that you can do that. And sometimes I even prop it open like this to watch a video, either on the top of the inside display, or I'll prop it up like that and watch it in kind of like a, like a tent mode on the outer display. Either way, it's, it's kind of nice to do that. But speaking of videos, you get kind of a weird aspect ratio with this phone, and that's a little bit of a drawback there. At least right now, videos aren't formatted for this, where on the front, you have an incredibly tall, incredibly thin display, and then on the inside, you have like a very square display. So you either have videos with really large black bars on either side, and you have a smaller video in the middle, or you open it up and you have a large video across there with black bars on the top and bottom. Granted, it's still a large display on the inside, so watching video is great, but it's so much wasted space on the top and bottom of just black space that you still have to hold as your phone, and, and if you want to watch a lot of media, that is kind of a little bit of a drawback. And I think that these phones would be better off, a lot of problems would really be fixed, if it was a slightly wider phone, you'd have a better aspect ratio on the front, the inside would still work well for videos also, and I just think you'd be better off in the future. Maybe they'll do that, who knows, other phones already are doing that. Positive number four is the pen and the large writing space. Of course, this is compatible with the S Pen, the Fold Edition S Pen, and I can legitimately get a lot of work done with this, from reading contracts, to uh, signing documents, to taking notes, things like that, it's really nice that you're able to do that. But there is a catch here. The pen is too large to carry around. Even though I thought I was going to use this all the time, I found that I just can't use the pen case because it puts the, the pen like right on the back. And when you open this and you want to write, it just wobbles like unbelievably. So it's completely useless. It makes it super bulky. And I just never bring the pen with me. But if they had like a silo and the pen could go in here, that would be fantastic because you really would get a lot done. You could actually read full contracts and sign things and have a lot of space to actually write on here. The fifth benefit is more of a social benefit. So using this is really cool. A lot of people want to see it. It's fun. It's novel. It's interesting. Showing everyone your folding phone it is definitely like a nice perk of having this phone. The fifth drawback is related to Snapchat. I use Snapchat a lot. A lot of people use Snapchat, I think. And so, first of all, you're not like your Snapchats look weird because you have a tall, skinny aspect ratio. So everyone receives your Snapchat with large black bars on either side, and they just know something's up with whatever device you're using. The second thing is, I think this is a really big missed opportunity where you can, like when you're taking videos, you can use the back as a preview, which by the way, is a huge positive. I use that all the time with the regular camera app, but with Snapchat, you can't do that. And so with Snapchat, you're either using the selfie camera there in a weird little skinny aspect ratio, or you open it up and you have the under display camera, which really sucks. And I, I think that you really want, wouldn't want to ever use that. But if you could use the rear lenses and see yourself, I think that would be such an obvious positive. Getting back to the positives, number six is that a lot of the drawbacks I expected and a lot of people probably expect from a folding phone were just really a complete non-issue for me. I, I didn't, none of them bothered me at all. Durability was really no problem. I'm very confident that the fold count on here can get really high. A little asterisk on that, I'll talk about that in a second. The weight on this was really not that bad. I thought it'd be heavier and bulkier. I don't care about that. The thickness, it's still very pocketable because it's slim this way. Uh, even though it's a little thicker here, that doesn't bother me. Uh, and I really thought the crease in the middle would be a little bit more distracting, but you completely stop seeing it and I just don't care that the crease is even there. But number six is that, little asterisk I said with the uh, durability is the dust resistance. So even as it is, like I don't have any problems with this, but I, like dust is in your pocket and your phone is in your pocket and this is not dust resistant. And when I open mine, it already, it already makes some really weird creaky sounds, doesn't sound good. So it's still early on. I don't have any problems yet, like I said, but I'm not super positive that I'll never have problems from that, so only time will tell. To summarize, there's a lot that I really like about folding phones and some things that I didn't really like about this phone in particular, but there really is a massive increase in productivity with this phone, mostly because you have that large display and messages, email, browsing the web, all of those were so much better on this, where it's essentially like a full tablet in your pocket, but I kind of like that it's smaller than a tablet so you're able to actually type on it. You also have things like the tripod mode or tent mode, all these different features that are really nice to have, but the drawbacks were really, you have that awkward aspect ratio on the front where you can't really use the front display comfortably like a normal phone, and the S Pen, even though I think that would be such a nice feature, just kind of feels like a miss here where you can't always carry it around. So with that in mind, I think phones like this will get wider and, and slimmer over time, but will they ever actually replace a glass slab phone? I, I don't think that they will fully replace glass slab phones. I think that they will coexist for a while and we'll eventually see 
foldables steal a larger market share than they currently have, but I'm just not convinced that they'll be a majority out there. I, I, I could see them definitely getting a lot more popular for people that wanna be productive, for people that want a larger display for watching videos, but I'm sure there's going to be a huge portion of the population that still likes a glass slab phone for the reasons I mentioned in this video. But leave a comment below and let me know what you think about folding phones. Are they the future or are they just a weird little tech fad? By the way, if you're new here and you like this style of video, don't forget to go down and click that subscribe button.